Well, I'm going back to back Canadian wins. I mean, he guys, he's on my team. I got to go play the Briar with him in three weeks. <laughs> Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. This is it. This is big time. Give us some thoughts. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, cheering as a as a Canadian curling fan and obviously wanting uh, to see two of my good friends do well there. You know, been a teammate of John Morris's for a long time and and obviously a good friend of Rachel's. They've had a, you know, grind of a week, I'd say highs and lows, but, uh, you know, they're right where you want to be. Uh, one, you know, three sudden death games to, to win the whole tournament. And I don't know if there's any other two players I'd want out there representing Canada than John and Rachel. Um, you know, I will say the... Uh, this is a big pressure game, probably more pressure than John and Rachel have ever felt, uh, just due to the circumstance of being chosen, right? You know, I was lucky enough to win win the Olympics in 2010, and then unfortunately we lost in 2018, but guess what? You know, we won those Olympic trials. We were the best team in Canada. We earned the right to go. So obviously when you get chosen, you know, not everyone probably thinks about this, but certainly having uh, that target on your back of, you know, Maybe possibly there was a uh, you know some controversy of who was chosen and reasons why. They want to show uh, to everybody curling Canada that they were the right choice, and to have that extra pressure on you uh, on top of what the Olympics brings, I think is a lot. But if I had to pick two people in the whole entire world, not just Canada, they're my two horses all day long. So I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward uh, to a good game yeah, tonight, you- John and Rachel. You did just mention the elephant in the room. Talk about that pressure, though, because certainly in Korea four years ago, um, you know, we saw definitely uh, the pressure in the uh, uh, that come with sliding over those rings and wearing Canada on your chest and back. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before. I've, you know, I've been on this show before and said, you know, it's not a guarantee Canada's going to win medals anymore. These world teams are, are strong. And they've obviously put up, uh, they put in a lot of time and a lot of training and they, they run their programs a little different than we do, right? So, you know, Canada still has the top curling nation in the world uh, for my money. We have the most depth. We probably have the most best players. But at the same time, these top teams uh, in Europe and all across the world are amazing. And we got to uh, we got to keep our foot on the gas and play great if we want to continue to win. So pressure is always there when you go for as Canada. If it wasn't pressure, that probably means you're not expected to win. And I don't want to be in those shoes either. So I think John and Rachel like where they're at right now. Uh, Benny, how much does experience count in these big pressure pack games? Italy has never won at the highest level on the international stage. Now the pressure ramps up. John and Rachel have. How much does that add to an advantage right now? Yeah, certainly. You know, I think, uh, you know, being there before and, and, you know, knowing what it takes to win is certainly a good place. And then no one knows it better than John, especially at the Olympic Games, men's and mixed doubles. And, you know, I don't know too, too much about the Italy team. I haven't even seen a game they've played this week, but I've played against the uh, there's their skip or I think he's the third for the men's team who played him at a couple Olympics. He's yep. the monster, right? The big guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So he's a, he's a great player. He can throw bombs and he's a crazy sweeper, you know? So obviously he's putting it together this week if they're eight. And four. But if you think that going in tonight's game, he's not going to be feeling a little bit of extra action going up against arguably the best curler of all time, John Morris. And one of our, uh, our other best curlers on the, on the women's side, Rachel Holman, he's going to be feeling that in the Maple Leaf. And I think that if they win, they got to play him again. I know where I'm putting my money tonight, guys. Not even close. <laughs> Very Great good. Stuff. Listen, I don't know what day it is, but did you play that outdoor big frozen pond curling game? It's uh, amazing. In Regina? Yeah, we played it yesterday. I'm still in Regina actually right now. Uh, as you see, I'm in my I'm in my in-laws' basement. I got the Scotties on here, and I'm about to watch John and Rach. But uh, yeah, we played an outdoor classic for curling day in Canada against Dunstone. It was an amazing scene. Something I've never got to do and. You know, I said to the the people yesterday, there's not a lot of things in curling these days that I haven't done that you get to go do that is new. So I felt like a rookie out there. We played on some natural ice. We made zero shots. We had a ton of fun. Um, it was crazy. It was beautiful weather in my in my hometown, which you normally don't get at the, in the early February. I had tons of friends and family in the curling community that I grew up here with, out supporting, and it was it was awesome to see everybody. We had a great day. Well, and, yeah. and a shout out to Regina, of course, because we'll be excited to watch Regina own uh, Mark McMorris compete for a medal tonight as well in snowboarding. Um, can we bring in another Olympic champion and have a little bit of a house party here, Ben? Uh, Who is it? The, oh, yeah. it's a superstar. <laughs> the superstar is here and the, the newest curling expert. Let's actually watch a quick little video because Steph she is was now... Bang on. 
is bang on. Let's watch a, her commentary right now. I just don't understand why you wouldn't throw a guard. Why not the guard? That's so good. <laughs> How are you, Steph? Great to see you. You are I'm, ready. I'm retired. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm ready for this. <laughs> Oh my God. Listen, were you a curling fan before these Olympics or is this a brand new thing for you? You know, I'm going to be fully transparent. My parents watch curling and growing up, I remember it was always on the TV and I didn't give it the time of day. And, you know, I was always thinking like, oh, that's, you know, my parents are watching this. I can't be watching this. This is boring. I am so into it. Like watching this, it's like, I'm hooked. The communication, I absolutely love that you can, like, I love the sound system of this and that you can hear every word they're saying. Um, it's such a like unique piece to sport. And like hearing that, I mean, I'm into it. I'm like sitting there in the middle of the night watching these games and it's, it's amazing. Benny, jump in. How good does that feel to hear? And I know you would have been watching uh, like the rest of all of us when, when Steph, uh, the, the National uh, Minister of Defense, of course, uh, brought it home for us. Oh, yeah. Well, Steph knows I'm a fan of her. She was nice enough to come on our little show a week after they won. So we got to chat about all her success and bringing home the gold there in, uh, in her last Olympics. But uh, I'm happy to hear she's diving into the curling and she's enjoying it a little bit and giving our sport a little bit of uh, a credit as well. But I do have to ask her straight up. She loves the communication and the mics that we wear. I get fined for that. I'm just letting you know. And I want to know if you'd like to wear a mic when you're playing in your competitive games at the Olympics. <laughs> uh that'd be interesting um <laughs> it, it would make me second guess a lot of the things i'm saying that's for sure um, totally you no know, i'd be open to it i'm not gonna lie there are times like sometimes they'll mic players up for training for like social media purposes and there's times i'll like lean over to a player and i'll like chirp someone or something and then in my head i'm like Oh shit, what if they're mic'd up? <laughs> you, um, Steph, that Ben uh, with the mics is still a wild man, okay? You never know what's gonna happen. He's been we'll, we'll mic up when we go out and curl. When I go out and try curling, we'll we'll mic me up and we'll see what happens. I told curl. Steph she's loving it. When when Johnny gets back to camera, we're gonna take uh we'll take him out for a little clinic and see how they do on the ice. <laughs> We'll be there. The cameras will be rolling. We'll go live with that curling show, do a pregame show for that. We'll call play-by-play. Play. Yeah, play-by-play, play too. What advice do you have in this pressure-packed moment for Canada where they've got to win? What were the words you would like to hear in the locker room or to yourself? How do you stay in the moment? Yeah, honestly, like, it, it makes me remember our gold final against Sweden. Like, going into that game, Sweden was undefeated. They were playing phenomenally. Um, they had been dominant throughout the entire Olympic tournament. and for us, it was just focusing on ourselves. Like we know what we can bring to the table and we know what we're good at. And the more we put focus on what the other team does, the more it's going to take away from what we can do. So just focus on yourselves. We know you guys are the best curlers in the world and, and we can't wait to see you guys shine. We're going to continue this conversation with Steph. Benny, before we let you go, can we get a prediction? Can we get a prediction? Because you, you said where you're going to put your money, but prediction because we've got, we could have two games uh, within 12 hours, this game tonight, and then a semifinal tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Well, I'm going back to back Canadian wins. I mean, he, guys, he's on my team. I got to go play the Briar with him in three weeks. <laughs> okay. So back to back Canadian wins, and they're going to get to the final. Gold would be amazing. Silver would be amazing. I'm praying for him tonight. And uh, yeah, I'm expecting big things. We got we got two horses running for us tonight. Johnny always says when I'm playing, he's always like, we got one horse left and he's lame, but we don't got a lame horse tonight. We got the good guy going. So I'll be cheering. 